John Myers has remarkably confronted the challenges of our time. Through his journey, John developed the philosophy that our goodness is strength. Together, we will change the world. So let's talk about the worst case of, Amer uh, of emotional abuse in history, um, which is what I believe I've endured. And what I want to get at a few things. One is the utter recklessness of emotional abusers who really have no reason to attack another person. So I had, going back, it's really started before, but 1988, you know, a younger brother who began to come at me, make all kinds of bizarre claims. You know, there was an attorney, Bishop, who lied about my grandfather's estate. For some reason, all these parties coalesced and came at me. And, um, I mean, and that's just the start of my, my brother's wife, Nomi, you know, brilliant Harvard Law, but, you know, maybe had, you know, due to divorce in her family, mental illness in her family you know, just had this fanaticism to take me down. And, you know, a process that went unfolded over 35 years, where my own, like I grew up in Scranton, right? And within a six block area, I had grandparents and school, religion, you know, all kinds of things in one area. We used to walk to school. And so very intensive familial background. And all these people, when it came to a divorce and my children, they viciously, along with my ex-wife, who passed away peacefully, according to her obituary in 2016, all came against me, right? Like, unfoundedly. For th and, like, and that's what you have to understand about emotional abuse, is that people really aim to destroy another person. And unless you've experienced, you know, deep challenge or deep narcissistic attack or psychopathic attack, you're not going to really understand this potentially. Um, but to know that there is hate, you know, there's not just hate, there's vicious hate. You know, people who really want to destroy other people. And this is a key point for no reason. Right? Could you imagine? I don't know. You know, most of us in my mindset just couldn't be further from that to go after someone for no reason other than the fact that Maybe deep down I'm threatened by them. You know, I cover up my inferiority with this false superiority. Whatever it be. But, um, you know, they came at me over my children, finances, family status, my own. You know, denigrating me and my life and my mindset for 35 years. My own parents. And that's why I say, you know, the world's worst lie comes the world's biggest lie comes from Scranton, Pennsylvania, where this is centered. You know, again, my parents held this view so tightly for 35 years, you know, randomly picking me and coming in. And I want to say that, look, I'm not a perfect person by any stretch. I've been, you know, grown and matured, gotten better over the years. So I believe I'm excellent now. Part of me never strive for, uh, for, Perfect, but the point being, we all have faults, and that's the difference between narcissistic attack and regular people. Most people have faults, and they just exist, and we learn about them, we try to deal with them, we knock things over, we're not always the best, but narcissistic, psychopathic attacks, they become nuclear. You see what I'm saying? They're nuclear attacks. So they're not just, you know, quirks or, you know, who we are as people, which, you know, Freud even said, those are the things that define us and make us human. You know, an extreme narcissist can take, you know, the smallest speck about you and look to drive a bulldozer through it. And that, and these folks have been, you know, Naomi, David, my Maury and Sandra Meyer, you know, been looking to do this for th this attorney Bishop, attorney Mike Perry in Boston, you know, originally from, ironically, from Scranton, too, have been aiming to destroy me <laughs> for 35 years. You know, not all of them at every point, but certainly viciously over the last 15. And this is why that I say to the world, I call it to the world, to develop your purpose. Because this is how, you know, I want to get to how we defeat narcissism. And the way to defeat narcissism, it's a very, uh, you know, I guess I'll use it, ugly battle. 
You know, it's a very, it can be a long and enduring battle. But, you know, my story that I look to share with the world, you know, I've gotten as far as the U.S. Supreme Court with it now, ironically, for people who attack me legally about my, <coughs> pardon me, about my kids and custody, you know, all kinds of things. Um, my kids are now adults. God bless. I even had my first, bless them, first grandfather, uh, grandson earlier this year, or September of last year. So, the point being, why I call it the worst, and I want to get to purpose in terms of the antidote, the worst because of the endurance of it, the irrationality and viciousness of it, and also the distance between how my family presents themselves as prominent, benevolent people, and the the iceberg effect, the underneath effect of the randomness and the irrational viciousness of the attack on me, make it what I call the worst case of emotional abuse in history. Now, the remedy, as I say, for, for narcissism and these kind of attacks, the beauty, if you will, is that it gave me the opportunity, and I, what I share with the world, to find my purpose, to discover who I really am as a person. Okay, because I was raised with fairness and you know, civil rights and all this. And I said, well, you know, if you're going to challenge me on that basis, I'm going to stand for fairness. And I'm going to stand for human rights and civil rights, you know, from my beginning with myself and extend it to others. And so little did I know the forces, the magnitude of the battle and the forces that would come against me, how hard I had to stand over 35 years. So um what I'm getting at is that there is a, a beauty when this occurs because it discovers a depth and a part of you you never knew existed. And B, that more general remedy is purpose, is to find your purpose. And when you have a genuine purpose, my point is, you can go through anything. Okay? You will prevail because it is, you know, the person who is operating for their own life. As long as you stick with it and as long as you're acting appropriately, you have to, like, you're going to go through years when people don't understand what you're talking about. You're going to go long stretches. And you have to have that inner faith, that inner belief that, yeah, I'm right. And as long as I'm acting, I'm right and I'm acting appropriately, I'm going to be okay. And it doesn't matter how long it goes. And, it, and I think the third element there is that you see, you know, you're right, you're acting appropriately, and you believe that it's got a higher calling, whether you call it a divine purpose, the universe guiding you, something within the, you could call a spiritual sense that where something calling you and saying, this is, I'm being called to do this for a reason. And that's the point I'm making. You know, you, you have to have that inspiration because when things get really tricky, things get stuck, you say, you know, well, I got to get up and, you know, embedded in me is the sense I need, this is what I ought to be doing, what I need to be doing. So, again, I offer training and coaching and mediation around these issues and, um, you know, help people develop this kind of this fortitude and this resilience, this capacity to navigate, you know, for themselves. So you can check out my website and all that, uh, you know. The worst case of emotional abuse in history. How to defeat narcissism? It, it takes. It's going to take. You're going to have to take it on as a higher calling, and you're going to have to say, "My life is changing, and changing for the better." As tough and painful as it is, and believe that there's a purpose for all this. And while discovering your own purpose, you're believing there's a purpose for doing all this. So that's a longer version of what I've endured and what I've gained and what I seek to share with the world.